I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, regular school board meeting today, uh, Thursday, May 2nd. Uh, if everybody, oh, go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Browning. Here. Mr. Steininger. Ms. Landis. Ms. Malad. Here. Mrs. Webb. Here. Okay, if we could stand for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation. school's last practice is this 29th, 4 to 6, come on over to Bell High, uh, in Fieldhouse 46, and it should be three-quarter party from the school as well, which will be their last practice, I think. Skyhawk Nation next week is share with the building community. We will share all next week. Um, Haley Ritter, who everybody knows in here, so all right, uh, broke the record. Most wins a pitcher in career last night as a junior. With the 15-1 victory, Haley earned her fifth career win. Did a little count of that. And right now she's leading line in Valley League in strikeout. Also, Haley Cook, the Washington Cook, uh, broke the career run scored in softball with 115, which is, which is really very good. Um, I was at Bakery yesterday with Mr. Walter, and as I was there, I was stepping around because they were ordering certificates. Exciting time for those teams. Congrats to all the coaches and the players. We will be able to make them even bigger. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Um, I just want to give a shout out to um, Karen and John Greta for uh, the high school choir concert that was just a couple weeks ago. Um, it was really fun to go and hear all the seniors do their solos and um, wishing all of our graduating se or vocal seniors the best of luck in their new endeavors. Um, and a little shout out for Jazz Fest is coming up on May 10th, and I believe tickets are still available. Um, you can uh, get those by uh, emailing Mr. Greta. Um, information about Fairborn High School's after prom will be held at the Sportsplex um, on Saturday, May 11th from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Of course, all of you parents you can stay up that late. <laughs> I'm not in anymore. Tickets will be on sale May 8th through May 10th in the Commons during all lunches. Tickets are $15 cash only. Uh, you can join them for activities, food, and games. There will be prizes for all of the juniors and seniors who attend. Dress is casual, and they will sell tickets at the door on May 11th. The price, again, will be $15, and they will, at the door, accept cash, Venmo, and Cash App. And for Green County Career Center students who wish to attend, tickets will be on sale um, Monday, May 6th, and Tuesday, May 7th, during lunchtime. And we are excited to announce that registrations are open for this year's Safety City. This event is available to children entering first grade in the fall of 24. For more information and to get signed up, visit the FCS or the City of Fairborn Facebook page for um, the online link. Okay. So first of all, I was able to get to a Florida Middle School softball game this week. Uh, we talked about an exciting game. Uh, it ended up 2-1. Uh, Kaylee pitched the entire game. She threw a rope to hold to yeah. stop the player from scoring for them to go ahead and win the and that ended the game. And then we had a walk off to hit from the bottom of the seventh to win two to one. So it was it was a real good game. It was fun to watch. Uh, on the music, uh, they had a band concert last night. Uh, there's also a band concert tonight. And just wanted to mention also about Jazz Fest the week of tomorrow. And, and like Katie said, email John Gerrard directly to get the tickets. That's how we keep. So last Sunday, uh, under the leadership of uh, Fairport City Council member Pam Stanton, uh, was our own environmental science teacher, Nancy Taylor, and our science teacher, Lexi Dick, uh, helped the community celebrate Earth Day at Fairport High School. Uh, prizes were awarded for Earth Day essay and art contest, and the community organization was present to share uh, valuable information about sustainability and conservation. Uh, thank you. I was there Sunday and actually got the opportunity to judge. Uh, it was really a reused project. And there was kids of all ages, four teams that put these uh, projects together. And they had to build uh, like a house for a, a rabbit or a you know, bird or whatever. And I was really impressed at all ages of how they work together, how they exchange ideas and some of the creative ideas that And then they, they actually gave a little presentation uh, about what they built and who did what, how they work as a team. So I'd like to thank uh, the two of them. Uh, the leadership here, I'm sorry, the leadership of the primary, uh, they hosted the culture night for the community. And uh, I'd like to thank Jill Bennett, uh, Val Herdman, and Twyla Hines. And a special thanks to uh, Matsui uh, Vargas. So next is recognition of visitors. Ms. Bradburn, do we have anybody signed up to speak at the Fairborn High School? Okay. Then we'll turn it over to Mr. Law. Thank you, Mr. Crowley. Uh, first up, um, what we really get excited about is academics here in Fairborn City Schools. We started 
to recognize more and more of our students with academic excellence. And uh, we have a number of students that would be getting recognized tonight, but we have a lot of students that are in so many extracurricular activities. But we do have some students here tonight, and those who are here tonight, Dr. Brackenhoff will be recognizing those students who are here. So Dr. Brackenhoff, I'm going to let you take it away. As Mr. Lolling said, we are so thankful that some of you were able to attend. I know somebody came directly from track. Um, you guys are all in my, involved in so many activities. So this year, we have been trying to highlight our academic excellence throughout the district to the students who not only excel academically with a 3.0 or higher, but they're also involved in either our music or our sports program because we know that that takes extra dedication and um, we want to recognize and thank you for working so hard both inside and outside of the classroom to make yourself and Fairborn great. So our first will be Aiden Rents for chamber music. Next, we have Molly Sherrick in Symphonic Orchestra. And finally, Autumn Tannis in Symphonic Orchestra. We had 189 students involved in our third quarter sports and music programs that achieved a 3.0 or better. And we so appreciate those who were able to come out. Any of the students who couldn't make it tonight, t-shirts and certificates will be available in the high school office starting tomorrow. That's it, thank you. I did have a three hour presentation on school finance this afternoon tonight, but since there's a concert, I'll try to keep it under five minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. The Ohio law requires school districts to do five year forecasts twice a year. The main one is in October, uh, and then any updates are due by May 31st. Um, so I've been doing them for 34 years before they were mandated by law. Uh, as I say, the only thing I guarantee is that every number on here will change. Uh, they're all wrong, um, hopefully for the better. Um, you'll see on there three years of actual. We're in fiscal year 2024 now, and then an additional five years on top of that is what we show out. Five-year forecast shows this year and four more. So um, just the, the biggest takeaways is we're in a strong, stable financial position. Uh, we're looking at our ending cash this year to end probably in the 32 to $35 million range, um, which is about uh, half a year's worth of operating expenses. And we're looking to keep that stable uh, roughly in that same range for the next three to four years. Um, but there's a lot of variables in there. There's state funding, there's income tax, there's property tax. There's always changes. And so these are my best guess at this point in time. As I say, I'm sort of like the early warning system for the tsunami. As we take a look, we look at a path, we try to think of what we're going to see in the next five years. 
and what we need. So in terms of uh, uh, receipts, the positive thing is, is uh, property taxes, valuations went up. Um, we went down to the 20 mil floor, which means minimum collections, which means one of the lowest property tax rates in the state of Ohio. And so we saw some increase in property valuations and property taxes. Um, my best guess is reflected on those uh, starting this year. The income tax is up slightly. Um, it was a big jump last year. I might have been a little bit too liberal on that. Um, numbers aren't quite coming in at that numbers yet, but still pretty positive in terms of our finances. Roughly total receipts for this year will be about $57 million. For expenditures, um, we have on our salaries and wages, uh, roughly $31.5 million that we spend. We are a labor intensive government. We don't manufacture chairs. We have people that provide services. So 85 to 90% of our expenditures are on people, salaries and benefits as school districts are. We have on there the closing the gap plan uh, shown for about $1.9 million for this current year. We're scaling that back next year to about $1.7 million. And then as a placeholder, I put that we're going to cut that closing the gap plan down in half the following year, and then the year after that, possible elimination. Those are only placeholders. But that decision will be made at some point in the future. We also have a line on there for additional employee. Really, that is for the increase in special education costs. We're spending about $600,000 more per year with the county ESC on special education costs. I do one line of what I think the employee benefits will be, and then that second line is additional insurance. It's sort of a worst case scenario. In terms of, I look at health insurance, it should go up 5 to 8 percent, but if they go up 12 to 15 percent, I've got a little barrier in there that shows the worst case scenario. Everything else tracks pretty much on target. Um, getting cash is sort of a, this line. Is what I look at as a worst case scenario. And then I plug back in the overage on health insurance to come up with this line. And then finally, we still have a little bit of CARES money that we're going to spend this year. That federal money will be totally spent by the end of this year. So this is really what I'm looking at in terms of the ending cash. Um, so it's, it's fairly uh, stable. We also do not have a place order in here for any new levy. Um, so that means the last operating levy um, for operations for salaries was in 2007. So we went 17 years without raising property taxes or operations. We had looked at something in November of 2024. Um, right now, with how strong we are, how property taxes are, we decided not to do that. Maybe at some point in the future, maybe at some point, 27, 28, 29, we might look at something small, but a lot of variables, state of Ohio, funding, income taxes, property taxes, et cetera. So right now, Strong and stable. Any questions from the board? Yes, Stephanie. No. That money is being used for salaries this year, and we totally spent it. So, yes, and that could only be used on salaries. That could be not be used. It could have in the beginning been used on HVAC and stuff like that, but not for building a building. Good question. That concludes my presentation. Well, good evening, everyone. Just a some of these updates. The new high school. We are, believe it or not, since just like yesterday, I would sit up here and say we're 24 months away from January, 23, 22, etc. We're 28 days away from finishing that high school. Substantial uh, completion date is May 31st. I get over there about two to three times a day, and 
they are, things are cooking over there. Uh, they are putting the final asphalt uh, cover, cover, uh, coating on uh, the parking lot uh, in front of the school. Uh, parking lot lines were put in today. That's complete. And I think tomorrow and everything else will do the uh, final coating with the asphalt and everywhere else. Uh, inside, Classroom furniture is being put together in tables, desks, etc. Uh, so the classrooms are starting to look like classrooms. Um, the uh, terrazzo flooring, um, they're in the process of going to town on that and getting that finished up. And some of the hallways it is done, and they are, they were, whatever they do, grinding it out today in the main foyer. Uh, and I'm telling you, that terrazzo is. Finishing that up in the arena, um, the bleachers are in, and uh, they'll probably finish that up. I'm, I'm thinking tomorrow, and then in the Performing Arts Center, uh, there's some work still going on in there, but all the seating is in at the lower level and the upper upper level. All those seats are in. Um, what am I leaving out? I mean, it's just uh, the athletic training facility uh, that's just about under the roof. Infancy stages of planning for that middle school and probably dirt, we'll need dirt maybe late fall, perhaps. That's still an unknown. Um, phase 3B of the primary. Uh, phase 3B, as I mentioned last month, uh, that will start as soon as school is out. And that's uh, some asphalt work, uh, some sidewalk curbs, and some fencing uh, to finish that project up. So that's been a long time coming with that. And uh, we're getting there. I, the only thing I would add on, on the new high school is they uh, they put the final coat down on the track and asphalt, and then they have to wait 30 days, so you won't see the all-weather surface <coughs> right at the beginning of June, because after the asphalt, they have to wait 30 days before they put the all-weather surface down. Mm -hmm. I'd see what they tell us tonight. Thank you. So next we have budget and finance. Uh, there's, there's two items. Uh, there's the financial, the five-year forecast, the monthly financial report, and then also uh, voting on a new package uh, with Kettering Health Center, uh, which would allow us to retain our current trainers in the high school. So let's get a motion to second if there's any questions. Second. Second? <laughs> there's only three of us tonight. Okay. Any questions? Next is administrative reports and superintendent recommendations. These go all the way to the middle of page 11, if you look at it. Uh, one thing of note is the resolution on the top of page 6. Um, it's for Gary Walker. Uh, Gary is going to retire uh, July of next year. So we're requesting a resolution of tribute for 48 years of education in Fairwood County <laughs> and uh, 26 years in Fairwood City School. So, Gary, thank you very much. Gary spoke at my college senior year special education class. He didn't say that about his alma mater, but that, that, I know you've been doing this for a long time because it's my fault. <laughs> So if we can get a motion and a second, then if there's any questions on the other items. We, so moved. I'll second. Any questions, comments? Mr. Pilot? Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Browning? Yes. Mr. Bly? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, next is gifts and donations. Uh, if we go through them, so the City Church of Fairmore. The Empty Nesters Community Group also donated food for the Hobby Pantry. Uh, 
Greene County Public the Fairmont Public Library donated a set of 2022 encyclopedias. Uh, William Vernon donated 250 to the Fairmont Library School. VFW Post 6861 donated 1500 to the OTC Club. Uh, for Hall of Honor, uh, Bill Schley, class of 1974, donated $50. The Ron McDermott Scholarship Fund, Dave Christen donated 100 For the Jennifer Whited Literacy Project, Earl and Cheryl Davidson donated 100 Fairmore Primary PTO donated $2,139.79. And Mike and Linda Geary donated 300 So again, we'd like to thank everybody that has graciously donated to Fairmore School District. With that, we'll go into work session. Yep. We'll immediately go into work session.